You know, it, it's like how many of us are really told the truth on many things? I mean, you know, mm -hmm. how many things are we denied what the truth is? And unless we look into what's the truth of the matter, we really don't know. And how many tricks of the trade are there? There's so many. I mean, yeah. you know, like just take an obvious one. Like you're watching TV in a show and it's, the sound is perfect. The minute a commercial comes on, it's so loud you can hardly stand it. Oh, how do they you get have to away go, unless with you that? have a clicker? Yeah. You got to get up and turn it down and turn it up and turn it down and turn. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's that drives you crazy. I mean, here you're lucky if you hear us in one tone. <laughs> oh, don't mind me. It's been one of those days drinking the brown bottle of my freshly brewed herbal tea. All right. Yeah. yeah and that's kind of goes along with what we're going to talk about uh -huh. today is mm -hmm. when you said the brown bottle and you know we last week um, it was so amazing to Lisa and I that because we were talking about Alzheimer's and, mm -hmm. and the care that goes along with it and um, speaking of that um, when the caregiver comes in mm -hmm. if it's not one of us mom locked her out of the bedroom again <laughs> oh did she yes. again I mean, she didn't even get in through down the hallway before my mother hightailed it into the bedroom, shut the door and locked it. See, nobody can say that she's really losing her mind because she knows <laughs> when she sees somebody that she better run. <laughs> and that she did. And oh, that, she did. that is so cool. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's funny. So I think that what we're going to, you know, she, she, and she tried to get my mother to eat. She wouldn't eat for her. She didn't mm -hmm. want to take her pills. She did for Spark. Oh, did she? Anything Spark wants. Yeah, she's, well, she's more comfortable with him. He lives with her, you right. know. So, right. And so, I don't know. At, at this stage of her disease mm -hmm. right now, it's not, it's not going to work because she's not going to allow it. She's just going to keep running from her. And mm -hmm. the whole the whole thing is, process is you don't want her to, to be anxious. Well, mm -hmm. if she's getting anxious the minute the person that is supposed to make her not anxious comes in, then it's not working. Mm -hmm. So timing isn't right. You, you know, it's really funny how you had just said that. And then you look at disease, because you had said about the disease, you know, a couple of keywords in there, disease, run from, mm -hmm. and it's like it sounds like that denial. The running oh, yeah. from, not looking at what it is, and that dis-ease dis-ease with it. Yeah. us. Yeah. I, I mean, it's with, interesting how it correlates. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and that's what we were talking about today. Disease, addictions, you know, take your pick. What, what, what is yours? I mean, pretty much everybody has a dis-ease within them mm -hmm. until they come to the point where they are okay being them. And sometimes that's a long and unending process. Yeah, sometimes it never happens. Right. Yeah, no, right. we never get but to it's, that. But it's that education of and learning, you know, what is a disease? You know, the American Medical Association has, you know, said that, yes, alcoholism is a disease. It is a fatal illness. My question is, if alcoholism is a fatal illness, then why are alcoholics treated as criminals and not put into a hospital or treatment? Hmm. Could it be that money is in the profit of the disease and decay in society? That the private jails and institutions, they have to answer to stockholders, which means that they are answering to a financial profit. And if the stockholders also have stock in the alcohol and pharmaceutical industries, why would they get people sober if that's their profit? Should we have private jails and institutions? Should we have a law that says, hey, if we have an alcoholic and they're suffering from a fatal illness, that they should be given some kind of a treatment and education. If an alcoholic can only um, diagnose themselves, then how's an alcoholic supposed to diagnose themselves if they don't know what an alcoholic is? Because it could seem so norm to them. Oh, it is. Mm -hmm. A lot of times it is norm, norm to them. And, and see, Shamrock, I mean, just like today, Shamrock <laughs> wanted what she wanted, and she wanted it now. And she didn't get it, and she wasn't very nice about it. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, Shamrock. Look at me with those big brown eyes. Yes. You want Lisa? Mm -hmm. But seriously, you know, looking at it, and, and we need to start looking at these issues that affect a lot of people. Yeah, and let's, you know, let's talk about that, what we're, what we're referring to. And you personally have, you know, such a situation going on in your life with your son mm -hmm. right now. Right. So why right. don't you share with our with everybody how you know how that system is working for him? How okay. it isn't working how for How the system is working, you know, and, and there again it's like, you know, if you have children, uh, if you have loved ones and you are involved in the criminal justice system, I always talk about that number. You know, getting a number of the revolving door of the criminal justice system. You know, you get in trouble with the law, you get on probation, and next thing you know, you're violating probation and you're put right back into jails. Well, why is that? If they are alcoholics and they're suffering from a fatal disease, why are they not in treatment? And that's what I've been trying to get with the criminal justice system in Pennsylvania. My son in a treatment program. And the probation officers, the judges, they don't want to hear that, oh, you mean he might be sick and he's doing things that he wouldn't do if he were sober? I don't quite get it. Even when you say something, his probation officer had told me that they were going to see about getting him in a treatment program. Well, he just got sentenced to 40 months in prison for violating probation, for shining a laser light in Kid Rock's eyes at a rock concert. And, you know, they asked him to put it away, but he was already in an altered state. And I'm going to show you some photographs that I had taken of him <laughs> in Florida. And these were back in uh, 2006, and it was before a shuttle launch. So the background is the ocean. There isn't any other light that it could be reflecting off of. But when you look at alcohol, and, and especially the older bottles, they used to have like that warning label, spirits, <clears throat> on them. Mm -hmm. And they're talking about the disease of alcoholism being a spiritual malady. Well, let me get those pictures, or, or Jen, can you throw up one of those pictures? Okay, there you go. Okay, now you see how there's those red and orange coming off of him? Mm -hmm. The ocean's the background. There is no other, um, you know, there is no other light. Now, some of it could be the cigarette that he's smoking because I have two, two photographs. But you see the, the orange, the yellow, red linear. Now, look at that one. There is no other light source that is coming off of him. Now, he was, whether it was intoxication, whether it was drugs, he has a disease. And I knew that if I did not stay with him that night, he would have ended up in, in jail or he would have been dead because he was in an altered state of mind. Mm -hmm. And how many of us have family who, under the influence of spirits, are in an altered state of mind? You know, how do we, how do we look at this? You know? Yeah, how do we look at that? You know?